Club Talk Radio. Today is Sunday, October 22nd, 2017, and school is officially in. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I can't do this with y'all. <laughs> Yo, that's what's up. Um, so we're uh, the Schools In Podcast. We're back again. Um, we are um, in our fourth installment of the Element Show, and I am joined, as always, by my illustrious co-host. Okay, so one of them is a little bit maybe Grandmaster Cass. I think that might be Aaron. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> and I think the other one might be a little more showy. I think it might be a little more Melly Mel. Hey, yeah. I think that that might be Aunt. Aunt, what's you up? Melly, you said Melly Mel? Yeah, a little more Melly Mel. So... Today is emceeing. We're going to talk a little bit about the origins in in, in our first um, period. And then we're going to, you know, put some people out to lunch. One person to, um, specifically. And then we'll come to period why some people are rappers and some people are actually emcees. And they are two very different things. How about that? So let's talk about the origin. The first two DJs, and for the sake of argument, everybody's gonna throw in, you know, but what about what about James Brown? Or what about Gil Scott Heron? What about the last poet? What about Pig Me Markham? All valid questions. All valid. I don't, and I don't hear it. <laughs> All right. Um, Aaron, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, um, valid arguments that you know they kind of. But we're gonna start at the hip hop origin of the MC. First, let's talk about what an MC is. Aaron, what's an MC? It's a master of ceremonies. Ooh. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Nice. Um, and that is literally... That is literally what it is. It would be the person back in the day when you would go to a concert or you would go to a gathering like a dinner or one of those boring places where you go to a banquet and you eat rubber chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody would be what they would call the master of ceremonies. They would be on a mic, on a microphone, and they would be commentating or controlling for the evening. Right. But um, would you, are we, are we going to talk about how like uh, hip hop uh, redefined that, uh, that whole situation. Um, how so, Aaron? Heavy side, heavy side. <laughs> um, I'm not talking about like in the bad way, but like you know, um, more so like you know, as far as like the origins of the definition of MC, Master of Ceremonies. Um, most of the time, like you know, like especially like you know if. You know, to any for anybody that's ever been to like a wedding ceremony or stuff like that, most of the time the MC is usually just the person that's you know, like you said, uh, pointing out things, you know, uh, talking about what's going to be happening next and all that type of stuff. Yep, kind of, kind of moving the program along. Yeah, yeah, 
But um, um, as far as hip hop goes, it's a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about MC, it's, it's the person that's you know, um, and and in those earlier in those earlier days, you know, it started off it started off like that, but it was more so in a it was more so in a musical aspect. You know what I'm saying? Where you got like right. Somebody, you know, they they rhyming on the mic, you know what I'm saying? They might be commentating on what's going on in the crowd and um that type of thing. But you know, it turned into a thing where it, it was just more so it was more so musical, you know what I'm saying? You uh uh getting getting the crowd hype, you know, as they dancing and all that type of stuff. True. And and as Aaron's just saying, in the very beginning, there were two very, very um um, notable figures who were doing that at the beginning of hip hop, the beginning of hip hop MCs. So, who most people will see as the sort of originator, who's DJ Hollywood, because a lot of the DJs like um, Frankie Crocker is one of the ones that people and DJ Hollywood people you know emulated dj hollywood the dj hollywood argument again is that same as we went back to the djing in our earlier show in our very first show for the elements when we did the djing it was the argument against hip-hop in a way because dj hollywood was a disco dj and he was the first one everybody said that they heard him rhyming like rhythmically talking over the music but it wasn't the breaks as we said in the first show it was not the breaks they would not let the breakers into those parties because they weren't dressed in high fashion you know they weren't wearing the right clothes and shoes and they came in trying to b-boy and they kicked them out and said we don't do that hip-hop in here So if you just denounce all the hip hop, then the very first MC is going to Coakla Rock because he was at the very first party that we talked about. That was DJ Cool Herc's party. And he was doing the same thing Hollywood was doing over the record, but he was keeping the party an old school master of ceremonies would do. Right. But then what you had, you started having your your shifts where people were like, hey, wait a minute. This person on the mic is kind of entertaining here. So then Coke Leroy kind of started stepping it up a little bit. And, it, you know, it became more rhymes and not just shouting out the DJ, the way Aaron likes to always say. Because that's what the origins were. It was about shouting the DJ out. Yeah, because um, I think it was Grandmaster Flash who was talking about um, how you know, it was hard for him to, like, you know, keep the record going and, like, talk on the mic at the same time. Yep. So they had to have somebody to to move the flow along, move everything ar- along. But then what happened, because, it was, like, a DJ was always the focus, but then you started having, like, how Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five started talking about, they started pushing those Grandmaster Flash and the Five MCs. Remember, he was talking about that, right? And in the Hip Hop Evolution documentary, um, do- documentary. Then, of course, we of course have to talk about the very first rap record that ever got big. And nope. Um, the first rap record that ever got big was Aaron. Um, rapper's delight. That uh, why, why why the heavy side? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not. It, the, you know what's funny about that? Like I was thinking about that recently. Like, um, I'm not. I mean, I know it's like politics behind that person. It's so. It's not even that bad. The comparison now, it's just like it's like you know, 
<laughs> it's like ran into the hole. But you know, um, I mean, can you really can you really be that mad at it now? That's all I'm saying. At this point, I think. Well, at first, nobody knew. And and what we're talking about is the fact that, um, technically, rappers delight is like a phony and a fake. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like a hip hop boy band. Cause all those rhymes that they were spitting, they weren't even there. Right. Like at all. Like Gr- Grandmaster Cass wrote <laughs> like a ton of those rhymes. Right. It was like, like the first, like the first ghost writing situation. <laughs> it's like the very first ghost writing. You write those rhymes. And yeah, Grandmaster Cass said he had no clue until they actually he heard them on the radio. Like he heard him on the radio and was like, "Yo, I wrote that shit." Yeah, that's gotta be that's, that's gotta be frustrating too because like at that time I don't even think like they they a lot of those older artists they didn't have like you know a good a good grip on the business aspect of things so they didn't. It was, uh, so, you know, yeah. what I'm saying it probably was like he probably wasn't even looking at like you know the money aspect. It's like oh they getting paid all Nobody of this. It was more, yeah, it was more so just like you know, damn, like, you just ran with my shit and then I ain't getting, I'm not getting. You know what I'm saying? You could, I, I could at least get credit for it. That's all, you know. Right, but I mean, we all know now, and so and we're talking about Grandmaster Cass, obviously, and we're talking about yeah. the first boy <laughs> band in hip hop, um, and the very first huge rap record wow. that ever I- came out. Rapper's Delight. <laughs> First boy. <laughs> I mean, wow. when you classify him like that, kind of, sort of? You were, I mean, you would have called Wu-Tang a boy, man. Because Wu-Tang wrote their own fucking rhymes. <laughs> and, and, and Wu-Tang weren't, like, mimicking or kind of making a semi, almost a semi-mockery of it. You know what's messed up? That's not common knowledge. It's not. Uh, Especially not anymore. Like that's gotten lost. Like we didn't know that even before then until we started reading. Like in my day, like uh, like in the early two thousands, it was like, oh yeah. And by the way, that shit was never really real. That's yeah. Talk about ruining your childhood. I mean, then, but then you had like Africa Bambada and like you had you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, and you had the Fearless Four and the Treacherous Three. Where shit was actually real, uh-huh. you know, and so that was okay. Like it was like, okay. Well, we're good then. But that shit was born out of a big fat lie. <laughs> like, yeah. But you know the the issue with that kind of the issue with that kind of stuff I noticed is that the people that take to it they don't really know the they don't really understand the politics or the rules that's being broken that makes it unofficial to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Very that's true. A, I was we were just talking about that. that. I was just talking about that with Maureen this weekend about how it's like a lot of people who don't necessarily understand the basics of the culture have a lot of sway and a lot of pull. But we talk about that all the time on this show, like how uh, and destroy art, <laughs> like. Like Sylvia Robinson, apparently. <laughs> well, even well, even not just them, not just them. It's some people who are like genuine artists who don't understand the rules of the culture. They just, you know, grab something that they thought was cool. Well, I would almost say that back in the day with Sylvia Robinson, when she heard, you know, and for all those who don't know, Sylvia Robinson was the architect of Sugar Hill Records. Yeah, it's Pillow Talk um, herself. Miss <laughs> Pillow Talk herself. She had a she had a modest hit back in the seventies, I believe. The seventies, right? Yeah, called Pillow Talk. And um pop label because she heard I think it was her son who was listening who like who went to some who went to one of those parties and had like I think the tapes mm-hmm. that they would have and he was playing and, and Sylvia Robinson was like, Oh, what the hell is that? Yeah. And we talked about on this show before how trying to catch hip hop in his early stages was like trying to catch lightning in a bottle. And part of the reason why the MC got pushed to the forefront 
is because that's the easiest thing to market. Right. Right. Can't you can't market graffiti? Not on no, not no, not that way. And you and it's hard to market a DJ, even though people like the tapes. It's like are people gonna buy tapes and tapes of cutting and scratching and zhuzh and and you know transforming? Probably not. That would probably. I, I mean, would, now that I'm thinking about it, then I'm thinking about it. That would kind of be weird, like if because records were still like popping back then. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, for you to for you to um like put out a record that's full of like a DJ just cutting and scratching and like you know <laughs> that would be kind of I don't know that would be kind of weird back then. I, I mean, I, I mean, back in the day you did it. People, you know, those part those those party tapes circulated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but. Yeah, but it, it circulated on tape. Like back then, you know what I'm like True. music professionals and, and record companies, they were trying to put out, you know what I'm saying, like legit records and stuff like that. They wasn't yep. like they didn't understand they don't understand like the whole tape aspect. Like I was watching this interview with uh Too Short and he was talking about like how he was trying to turn up like back when he was doing his thing independently. He he mm. would turn up the bass so high that, you know, the the um, engineers and stuff would be like, you can't do that. Like it's going to mess up the record when you put it on. You know what I'm saying? It's the, the needle going to yeah. jump off the record when you're doing it like that. And he like, I'm not yeah. trying to put it on record. I'm not, I'm not trying to put it on wax. I'm trying to put it on yeah, tape. Yeah, it's gonna be you on tape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's true. But you got, you got like acts now. Well, not now, but more recently, who did like four tapes like that? That was just DJ too, like the uh, executioner, for example. Oh yeah, I mean I you damn. still have it. But it's it not. It, it does happen, but I mean, with the whole culture, like I mean, yeah. could you sustain the whole culture off of that? No, it's not popular. It's not. Yeah. And I think that that's part of what Curtis Lowe was getting at in Hip Hop Revolution. We don't particularly care for that that sentiment <laughs> <laughs> because we know that that the culture is is multifaceted. And everything, you know, deserves to be where it is in the culture. But it's just that emceeing has been the most, the, the easiest thing to, to climb onto. And I don't, and, I, I don't know how, I don't know how I feel about that because, like, how, you, like, how can we say that you know you can't, you know, like DJs, you know, what I'm saying, like putting records together, you know, what I'm saying, in the way that they do it is not marketable. But you got people that can sell whole beat tapes. But that's my and, and that's my issue, is that you that's, can't. Yeah, that's it started crazy. with the DJ. You can't have it without the DJ. It wouldn't exist without the DJ. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we're talking musically, not you know, musically, yeah. not in general. Right. Yeah. The other two, you know, tangible aspects of it are very independent of the music, but. You literally can't. None of this happens if there's no DJ and no break. Right. There's no break beats and no DJ and no break beats. What the hell are you doing? You might as well go back to that banquet and eat spongy chicken. Cause that there's there's <laughs> there. I mean, what are you doing? There's no beat for you. There's no. What are you doing? It's all interdependent. You know, you can't have one without the other. So, so we're talking before about cultural shifts in hip hop, and so all those first MCs kind of fall into the like that DJ Hollywood Eddie Chiba like sounding until you get to the Treacherous Three, mm-hmm. when Cool Mo D, who we love talking about amongst the three of ourselves, we haven't bigged up him on the show as much, but he, I mean we probably should. Um, one sure. day we'll probably. I mean, one day we'll. Well, when we do the the um the the hip hop rating show, we'll of course we'll dust off you know God on the mic and talk about. We cool should do that. Get it. What'd you say? We should do that book if we can get it. I have it. You know, I still have it. That book is expensive now. It's out of print. Oh man. It's going to cost you like $130 at this point. <laughs> Can you photocopy? <laughs> photocopy it all of a sudden. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it's just narrated for and me. It's narrated. Cool Moldy, Cool Moldy Anthony is not advocating 
the plagiarizing <laughs> of your of your book over the I, air right now. Love <laughs> Kumo Z, no disrespect. <laughs> I ain't got a hundred and thirty dollars laying around. I'm sorry. But your book is out of print, Kumo Z. We need it to come back into circulation. Yeah. So we can yeah, buy it legitimately, right? But um, Cool Mo D and Treacherous Three actually started a shift with a new a, a song called New Rap Language, where they were rhyming very differently than that very early DJ Hollywood sound that everybody else had. You know what's so funny when I li- play that. What? It has very, it, it it it's got a similar cadence to the to those triplets. Mm. That everybody keeps talking about they invented that we know that they did not. Right. Cause I sent some Death Jeff earlier. That's your Where point. Death Jeff doing it. I told you. That ain't bad. <laughs> That's too much for a book. Yeah, how many pages? <laughs> <laughs> so Anne is on Amazon trying to trying to track down Kumo D. There's a god on the. I need that. Very expensive. Everybody needs that in their life because we need a rating system. These sons of bitches now nah, just be like. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what I never that's what I never liked about um you know as far as like um you know rappers and MCs and hip hop like we don't have like that uh that that system where it's like like when you hear for example when you hear somebody singing you could you can like you know people a lot of people would just be like eh, you know they all right or you know they trash or you know they're really good you know like when you hear somebody mm-hmm. singing um. But when it comes to rapping, like a lot of people, it's just like it's relative. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's like you know, yeah. It just depends on how whoever feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Or that is not times. okay. That is not okay. We can't we can't move around in life like that. Like it it can't just be about your favorite shit. Like it, that's not a, a a system or a a way to actually rate things. So. This whole, well, it's just art, so it, it can't be judged. No, you idiot. As we said a zillion times on this show, art has always been judged. Hip-hop has criteria. It needs to be mm-hmm. adhered to. Right. And, 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 and this whole, the shit don't have to be lyrical crap. As we just talked about, there is no reason for you to grab a mic... And start doing anything. But see, I think the problem is this. I think we evolved as far as we could go. <laughs> I don't like know this. if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I mean, what else can you... You, you know what? I'll tell you something. Somebody who had a really good point, And I, I don't know if you guys saw this. So we, we don't always agree with Joe Button on this show either. But Joe Button had a good point about lyric ability. So in the... Uh, at the at the end of like the golden era, like towards like mid nineties, all those 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 beats, those BPM, those beats per minute, right. they drop down really low. And we talked about this before. When you drop that shit down really low, and it's not as fast as it was, like during the New Jack Swing era. People who have less lyrical ability are now capable of rhyming over these records. Mm, they can, I, and I never even thought about, about this. Yeah, I didn't I, even I think, think about that. I think we were talking about have. that on one of our early shows. We were talking about that. Yeah. You don't have to be as good at being a, a an MC without those fast beats because you if you can't keep pace with those beats and still be spitting out those lyrics like that if you drop those bpms down you can spit quickly over this really slow beat because that tempo allows you to do it so we're going are we going to start are we going to start blaming uh producers like marley marl and pete rock and them 
Yeah, they, 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 they like they famous for those types of uh, beats. They kind of sort of are, and they kind of sort of aren't. But in the same in the same breath, I wouldn't say like it's all it's all negative. Like people like Rhapsody and Kendrick Lamar are pushing the envelope and wait like they're a step above the standard. They're way more than a step above, and please. You know what I'm saying? Like they're they're pushing the envelope in new and bolder ways. They're they're showing that there it is possible to grow and still adhere to the basics of the craft. That's true. You know what? I don't. I, I don't want to blame all the producers for slowing the BPMs down, but I mean, I'll say this about it, Aaron. I don't think. <laughs> I'm, I really 100% don't believe that when Pete Rock and Premier slowed the BPMs down, they had fucking trap in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably not. <laughs> I doubt if they ever thought in their wildest dreams that that was the garbage that they were <laughs> they were about to make way for. Like, no, I don't one hundred. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think that they would thought that they were okay. Well, we're going to innovate some more. We're going to mix in different types of yeah. music. We're going to like it's about pushing the envelope, as Ann just said. I don't mm-hmm. believe that they felt that it was going to be somebody stepping in and go fuck the envelope. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad Anthony brought up um, uh, Rhapsody and Kendrick too, because like, um, and we was having this conversation a while ago, um, off air. I feel like it's. Uh, um, I feel, I feel like Anthony's right. He's right. Like you know, there are those artists. You know, what I'm saying that's still, you know, that's that's still trying to carry on tradition, so to speak. But a lot of times, I feel like. They get caught up in this, um, the standing in the shadows of what was before. A lot of times, where I feel like a lot of, a lot of artists before then, they didn't, they didn't have like all this stuff thrown in their face. Like every time we get a new artist that come out, like when J Cole started popping, I remember, like everybody, you know what I'm saying? The pressure is on him, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he the savior, he the next, he the next, nah, right. he the next day, he the next, you know what I'm right. saying? Like all this, right. it's all the, it's all this what came before that get that get thrown on newer artists, whereas though they feel like oh they obligated a lot of times to you know uh, take on this type of this, this type of you know uh, standard or you know bring this type whatever particular type of energy because that's what fans is uh, you know demanding. You know what I'm saying, especially the older crowd. I don't know if it's and that I, don't, that I don't think that's fair. Being demanded or but I don't know if it's being I've, demanded, but but I think it's just that's how high the bar is set. It is yeah. it is fair for the bar to be set high because look what happens when it's not. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I think I think that's what's happening a lot of times. Like, it's like we if we had this conversation uh, before too. Like, uh, that's when these kids get caught up in these statements. They get caught saying stuff like, "Oh, I'm better than Tupac." Like, Tupac is overrated because you present that argument to them in an interview or whatever, and they they feel some kind of way about it. Like, I don't want to be the next. Why do you? Why do you feel girl. like though that I don't know? Number one. Uh-huh. That's like that's like really weird. Why are you shading the dead dude? Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. But that's crazy. Yeah, but it at happens. the same time, I feel like you. What it is is like they not they not savvy enough to like. Cause if you watch interviews with like uh like uh Rap City, like, like Rap City interview on Breakfast Club was a uh, is a good example. Like you know yeah. she wasn't really she wasn't really shading no newer artists and she wasn't you know what I'm saying she was just you know she yep. brought up Lauren Hill or whatever. But it wasn't like, you know, it was like, you know, but I'm here to, I'm here to carry my own, you know what I'm saying? My exactly. own energy mm-hmm. into the, I'm, I'm yeah. going to put my own footprint in, in this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was it's inspired great. by this, that, and the third, it's but, you know. But that's the question. It's graceful ways around the question, but the question itself, I feel like it's yeah. a set up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot, a no, lot of times. I think that the two of you are right, but definitely how Rhapsody handled that. That's the way you handle that. Like, it's, it, that, that, that's not germane to hip-hop. If you go on R&B, the same thing will happen. Like, just, don't ask you the influence, sir. It's just what it is. Like, and you don't shade a dead man. You go, you know what, that, that man Tupac was an amazing lyricist. 
you know, if I'm half the lyricist that he is, you know, and I accomplish what he, you know, or half of what he did, you know, I'll be, you know, an amazing, you know, MC. However, you know, I think my style is a little bit different because, and then you go off in the, you, but there is no, there, there's but, no boundaries, there's no tact, there's no nothing in this generation. They just fucking fly off the handle. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, but I think the, I think what, what we try, what we try to get at though is that like a lot of times like, you know, as an artist, that that's a that's annoying when like you know what I'm saying like you you get presented it's like or you gotta see you gotta see people talk about and debate on social media all day and it's like oh well you know Good Kid, Mad City was alright but it ain't no Illmatic that it'll never be a reasonable doubt and it's like why you know what I'm saying like why is that always the, the because, shadow because because and this you can think about hip hop is set up in a very different way than than than. Um, other genres, and we know that it's a battle, it's a contact sport. So you're yeah. always gonna have that. There's no way not to have it, but it's a graceful way, like you said, for you to, you know, to answer that. Um, Good Kid, Mad City is gonna be somebody's Illmatic. It's not my Illmatic. It's all about context. And we've had this discussion before. Like you all were like. DMX was our, you know, Tupac, and I'm like, DMX was not my Tupac. First, DMX, but I never I said, I never said DMX was my Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron was like, don't you fuck me that shit on the air. Yeah, don't, don't put me, don't put, put me in that, but he, like, DMX did, like, you know what I'm saying, like, he was, like, an integral part, like, you know, as far as, like, when I was, when I was listening to hip-hop, he was an integral part. But see, I was, I was, I was already past my point, you know, in prime point, I wasn't a teenager anymore when that happened, we talked about that, for him yeah. to have that kind of influence on me, like, Tupac was, you know, in my college years and stuff, so his influence was much stronger. He's in my generation. DMX is in my um, generation as well. It's just he didn't have the same impact on me, but he did on people your age. Exactly, um, but DMX, but DMX also never had to deal with the the pressures of oh, Dark and Hell is Hot was dope or Flesh in My Flesh was dope, but it'll never be at this. You know what I'm saying? Well, he <laughs> like did that's... get compared to Tupac. We just he he did get compared to Tupac. Not Back then. Yeah. Not yeah. I don't. I still don't feel like it was in the same well. Well, I, I, I got to see that. <laughs> that too. And Aaron, here's the here's the other issue. Like, like I said, I feel like we done. Like it hit a plateau because we did as much evolving as we could do with the genre. If shit could be better. Like, where's the better? Like, too much garbage is out. If so much garbage wasn't out, we wouldn't be constantly having these issues all the time, though. Yeah, but that's, nobody... that's basically the that's basically the argument I was trying to make. I feel like a lot of times the pressure is put on other artists that we do feel like, you know, they are doing their job. The, the pressure gets put on them because there's so many people that's, like, trash. You know what I'm saying? And that's not well, fair. I don't think. No, and no. But, but don't go back to the DMX and, and, the, and the Tupac. The people you should go back to is the motherfuckers making trash. Yeah. Yeah. Go get in Future Space and fucking Uzi Vert and all these other motherfuckers making all this trash. Go get in their face talking about dude. You trashing it up in here. You stinking up the joint. Everybody's in my face. <laughs> sure. Talking about talking about where the fuck is the next, you know, great record. They should be asking you that too, not just me. Okay, oh, but man. no. Go get in go get in eighty six garbage's face and ask him why. Like, stop. <laughs> one man's trash is the next man's trash. <laughs> or one man's trash is the other man's bag filled with Stuff that needs to be discarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. So, so, it's all uh, so after Treacherous Three, getting back to the the oranges. So sometimes we go off on tangents, especially with MCs, because we get passionate about that. Um, after Treacherous Three's new rap language, like you kind of had a new guard, like like a like a change of guard 
and it was kind of like a weird a weird interim when Curtis Blow stepped into the arena. Curtis Blow was the first um to be the first like MC by himself to be signed to a major rap label. <clears throat> LL prototype. He is the LL prototype. He is considered the first It is unfortunate that Kumo D is an interim. And he isn't, I call him an interim MC. And that's because everybody's like, what does that even mean? How would you even talk? Because he came in the interim between the changing of the guard. Yeah, he really did, didn't he? Yeah, so like when the old like DJ Hollywood type were changing over in just before we got to the changing of the guard where somebody like Kumo D, not Kumo D, excuse me, um, Curtis Blow is handing off to Run DMC. What, and, and Aaron has said this before, I think in the, the first element show on DJing, like Fab, um, the Fab Five, were, they were taking on like more aesthetics from other areas outside of hip hop culture, as Aaron had said before, because they wanted to look like the funk artists and stuff that they were touring with when they were out there. They wanted to look more like showy and rocky and like same thing with Africa Bambada. They were wearing all this costuming on stage and it looked not like. The eye patch. Right. They were, they were wearing all these big, crazy looking costumes and stuff on stage. <laughs> they looked more like probably men funkadelic than they did like what they looked like when they were b boying in the street. And so it kind of got lost a little bit, the culture. And then all of a sudden, Run DMC comes through and people, and I think, who was it that told him? I think it was probably, um the um, Furious Five. And Run DMC had like a lot of run-ins with old schoolers because they were like, don't nobody want to see that street shit on stage? Little did they know. Turns out everybody wanted to see that street shit on stage. (laughs) (laughs) Run DMC stuff on the stage with their straight off the street, no laces in them. Melly Mel seemed genuine. Bottom off the half, bottom off the genuine. half with the fly lead denim. <laughs> Melly Mel seemed genuinely upset about it too. He he was. But but it but Run DMC was the they were they were to the street. They were close to the origin. Right. So when Run DMC came out, the other parts of hip hop were still banging. You know, we're still going. You, I mean, you still had people that were b-boying and breaking. So they came in like right at the time when when things were getting handed off. And so then, after Run DMC, then you had like Houdini and you had the Fat Boys and you had, you know, a lot of other um, MCs coming up that were bringing the street culture back. They wore their street clothes on stage. You know, they had a different style of rhyming. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit what nobody say. The fucking fat boy is still my shit. And Houdini. <laughs> oh, you didn't get it. Yo, Houdini, <laughs> yo, Houdini, Houdini, Houdini could do a live show, man. You seen that live show they did at the Hip Hop Honors that year? You know what? I saw them years ago, though. Their their old shows were off the fucking chain. Aaron. See, but they that's really that's why I said that's why I said that shit got to be impressive back then, cause like even, like they're like them being as old as they are, like I I feel like they could still hang with a lot of these acts. Uh, because they, re- they were they, you know, and they had they had um Jermaine Dupree in the back, you know, doing some dances. Oh shit, they did, didn't they? <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> Jermaine it's Dupree was a, a, was a dancer and a roadie for um, Houdini back in the day, and I mean they were pretty big. These these, these groups were huge. Like Run DMC was one of the first mega super groups that crossed over. Of course, thanks to Walk This Way with Aerosmith, like one of the like one of the you know 
the beginning of the um, rock rap origin. I love that yeah. song. Thank was you it very like much, mandatory? Rick Rubin. Was, so it was, so it was like mandatory before then to like be in a crew. Most people okay. were kind of in a crew. Yeah. The same with- they were in collectives mm. more so. So like, a, the, uh, so like being a so like being so like being a solo act like if you were just like you know if you were just like a local dude like you know rapping in the street like that wasn't as impressive as like you know if I was rapping in the street with my brother. It, right, like I mean, most people were like Curtis Blow was kind of an anomaly a little bit. Like, who else did you see? Like you know, like a, there weren't tons of one offs. There were some, you know. Right. There definitely. Yeah, I know him. Because right, or, or like Jimmy Spicer. Jimmy Spicer was a was one everybody. Like he he made dollar bill, y'all. Dollar bill, y'all. Dollar 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 bill. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> he was one of the really old school ones back in the day. Hey, uh, ain't Curtis Blow a preacher now? Is he a preacher now? He might be. I like that. Hold on, let me do this more angle. I bought. I just told I want that book for Christmas. That back. It was so dope. It was like, look here, um, woman in my life. Yes, world. In case you didn't know, I have the greatest I girlfriend. Mean, in, I have uh, the greatest girl. Um, yes, maybe not for long. You might not, but we'll see. Anyway. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> M- moving on. <laughs> moving on. After Run DMC, like that whole, we have a new, like a flip over and a changing of the guard. And we start moving into the really big crews. Like one of the first big crews that I remember was um, Boogie Down Productions and and um, the Juice Crew. The Juice Crew was on the scene for a long time. Uh-huh. I shouted them out in a round one time. They got some really old records that my boy, like, plays for me sometimes. And, yo, you would be like, yo, this sounds super old. But then, of course, someone comes along and, oh, yeah, Curtis Blow received his salvation as a born-again Christian. Uh huh. And and just looked up Kumo. Um, looked up. Sorry, Curtis. I keep calling him Kumo. Did Curtis Blow? In 1994, and he was he's been ordained since 2009. Curtis Blow. Hip Hop Church of Harlem, and he's a rapper and a DJ and a worship leader and a licensed minister, and he joins the ranks of Reverend Run because we all know he's ordained and he. Yeah. Uh, a group trip to the hip hop church in Harlem. <laughs> that is insane, man. Group trip. We got to take pictures and post them on the website. Yo, I've been to Reverend Run's church once. Where's that? I don't, I can't remember. I forgot, but I definitely have been. I want to go. Um, but I'm after that, I'm gonna let Aaron me. tell y'all who changed. Who changed the game next? Who did Baton get handed off to, Aaron? Da, da, da. At the Run DMC. Yep. There's uh, the, one the man guy. that everybody, the, the guy that everybody looks to, and like a shining beacon in the night. Yeah, yeah. The the guy on the MC, you know, everybody's everybody's favorite MC. Uh, the uh, father, the father. Oh, the, the, the father of it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, he spelled it with an E and everything. Rock him. E M E E C. No, E L. I can't spell it right. E M E E. E M C E E. Excuse me, my phone is always bad. What are what my top five? Spelling is always he, bad. You're a former English teacher. Come on now. <laughs> no, but M C is not real though. Like he spelled it the way he wanted to spell it. MC means move the crowd. I can't argue with that. It you can't even spell. You can't spell the move the crowd with an E. You can't. <laughs> you absolutely cannot spell, spell move the crowd with an E. You know what's funny about that? <laughs> that um, funny? that 
I, Rock him I, I a always, lot is, is is amazing. Yeah, he is dope. He is dope for that because every time somebody like uh like like force they own force they own phonetic on like uh, a word or something, I always think of him first. Like when he say like uh dream and imaginate. Yeah, I love that <laughs> Don't call him a guy. <laughs> Can I play the same thing? Like, like, dramatical. Dramatical is not a word. Hold on. Yeah, right. Hold on, hold on. Imaginate. What's the word? Not... Imaginate I... is not a word, though. Oxford Dictionary is exactly Neither is dramatical. Like, I care less. What the fuck is dramatical? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think I think of Rock Kim every time I hear somebody do that. Like I heard Black Thought do that on a song I was listening to recently. I was like, I thought Rock Kim again. Yep. It's only you gotta be a god MC. Yep. A Z did it like, too on Life's a Big He, 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 he said money orientated. There would be no yep. There would be no other <laughs> God MC. There would not be a God MC without the God MC. Rakim Allah. So Black Thought is like Hercules. <laughs> and, and you know what though, Aaron? Let's take it back to your conversation before we go. Um, before we go out to lunch, the here's my issue. Back in the day, when people kept re- comparing you to Rakim, because everybody got compared to Rakim. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean people like that were already out, like his contemporaries. That I get. If somebody like if, if somebody said, "Hey, nah, you sound like Rakim," he didn't say. I don't want to be compared to Rock Kim. You would <laughs> never hear now. Right, right, right. No doubt. Yeah, shit. yeah. You say, "Oh shit, you serious?" Like, you compare me to the guy, um, the fucking God MC. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Saying I'm the new God MC who's standing to the right. Bottom minute trick. <laughs> I am the second coming. I am the next God MC. Hand me the mic. Yeah. I, you know you, what's crazy about that too though is that nowadays like people will throw people will, people will throw you in a certain category for no reason though like I feel like for other people like people might for somebody you know what I'm saying like Gucci Mane is somebody's Tupac now so you know they might throw him in that category like you Gucci you know Mane what I'm saying? Like Sam Tupac. Yeah, I mean for, for somebody he is you know what I'm saying I'm sure he is no, no. I, would, I would let you have Somebody else, but not not Gucci Man. Somebody's Jeezy. He's not nobody. Even Tupac. if you said like, even if you told me Kendrick was somebody's Tupac, I would let you have that. I mean, <laughs> like, like somebody was arguing with me the other day. Um, cause I was cause I was talking about how um, what's funny? It somebody's Tupac. That's hilarious. What? Oh my god! The idea that Gucci is somebody's Tupac. That's ridiculous. Like, so <laughs> somebody <laughs> talked to me the other day about how, um, or before about how like some young people were like, you know that that um a boogie with a hoodie and and um who's the other one? The other one I can't. Oh, um, Kodak Black. Well, they're. Jay Z and Nas, and they're like, no, you ass hat. Jay Z and Nas are your Jay Z and Nas still. Ouch! Who would dare make that comparison? Stop it. <laughs> Some folks yeah. who don't know shit. You don't yeah, have that's... a Jay Z and Nas. You don't have a Jay Z and Nas. You don't. Everybody is Jay Z and Nas. It's Kendrick Lamar and J Cole. But see, the issue and the problem with that, and is that. Jay Z and Nas are a little bit more street level, and Kendrick and Jay Cole and them are more akin to the more conscious people that we would have liked, you know, back in the day. The issue is they don't have a Jay Z and Nas. You don't have high caliber street MCs anymore because all the stuff that you all like is street millennials. It's all garbage. It's all twenty one. 46, 32. I don't know. I don't know. Davies, Davies kind of street. Freddie Gibbs, Davies, Freddie Gibbs. They kind of, they kind of. Uh, I mean, I might even give somebody Joey Badass if they wanted to say that. 
Sometimes I'm not really. I don't, I'm not impressed by. Yeah, Joey. I'm not. I'm not sure about Joey. Baby. I'm not either. But I mean, people like Joey Badass, and he's not completely. He's not complete garbage. I'm not gonna say that. I heard. I heard. Um, what's the name say? Uh, the DOC. Big up, Big Sean. Okay. So that so makes me want to go. I need to play Big Sean again. We keep saying that. I like that one album he put out the joint with the black cover. I don't know the name of it. I like that joint. I didn't play it too much, so. I need to tr- try to give Big Sean some spins. Like, really sit down and listen to him really good. I'm all right. Even, even when I hear, like, you know, artists that I highly respect. Like, when I hear them co-sign certain people, I'm just like, I don't know. I, I can't, no. like, because it's, it's a different day and age we live in. It. True. That's true. He missing something. That's what I feel like too. Like when I play him, I'm like, I want to like him. Like I really, but I feel. Like, but I mean, some folks feel like that about J Cole too. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what his problem is. He's born. Would you stop it? I hate when people keep saying that. I know y'all they, never explain why though. Why he born? I'm not <laughs> born to me. He's not born to me. Born Center is a standout in his catalog. I like folding clothes. Fold my clothes, J. Cole. Hey, yeah. <laughs> if you want to come over here and fold clothes, I got tons of them in a bin over here. You can fold all of them. There's an elephant in the room right now. Like, my nigga. <laughs> fold clothes. Come on, bro. <laughs> Watching Netflix. Drinking almond milk, you know. Hey, oh. you can fold my clothes, watch Netflix, and drink some almond milk. I got some almond milk in the refrigerator right now. I got I Netflix. Thought, I would have thought Kendrick would have did that song first. Surprise me with that, Joe. I can't see Kendrick making folding clothes. I, don't, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I really can't. I, Kendrick doing it in that funny voice. <laughs> <laughs> Funny though. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people mixing colors with their whites. <laughs> oh shit, no. <laughs> I can see Kenny doing that. Especially following us. That shit is hilarious. Wait, okay. <laughs> not doing it. Not doing it triplet slow. Not doing it triplet. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That was hilarious. We got to go out to lunch, yo. That was funny as a motherfucker. I can't. <laughs> yo, Aaron be coming out left field with you sometimes. All right, y'all. I feel as though... I feel as though I want to let Aaron kick off this out to lunch with mirrors because I feel like I'm really going to just cuss him out in a way that will make him cry. So, dramatic. Uh, <laughs> no. <sighs> First of all, mirrors, mirrors, you, he too old. He too old to be acting the way he's been acting like lately. I don't, I don't understand. Maybe, you know, um, Maybe his his uh, record sales not doing too well. His merchandise or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, and um, is he selling records? He's a problem. Um, I can't be a bitter rapper in your career and be a critic of the culture. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like last last thing I heard he had the last thing I listened to anyway that he had done it was something he did with Knife Wonder. I think it was. Um. But that was nice wonder is quality. Nice wonder is quality. Yeah. Well, you know, Murray's got he got some joints. Like I wouldn't say he like you know uh, like great or anything, but he got some he got some joints I like. Yeah, I I like him. I think he's the um. I mean, I'm sorry. I like Nice Wonder. <laughs> I mean, I was talking about Nice Wonder. I wasn't talking about Murray's. Oh okay. Um, so we're talking but yeah, um, specifically about like just in case people haven't seen 
Yeah, there like his is... hip hop, his hip hop, his hip hop DX rants are like they like the worst. It's the worst. Like you know, he on there, you know, um, talking about uh, real hip hop versus fake hip hop. Talking about yeah. you know, uh, yeah. You know, I don't even. I I mean, I was feeling some kind of way about that uh that whole Wu Tang John too, because it felt like some type of cheat way to redeem himself. All right, let's do it yet. Um, no, which one didn't you play yet, Ant? The last one. I played that oh. one, but but the one, I'm sorry, the one on real hip hop versus fake hip hop. <clears throat> that's the one we're talking about for everybody who. Yeah, that's the one that got him right here where he is now that, out to lunch. Cause that's why I listened to the last one. Yeah, for him to for him to me kind of. Yeah, for him to compare the stuff that he was comparing, like, this is what we always talk about on this show. Like, you know, taking stuff out of context and just, like, throwing, you know what I'm saying, one thing in the bag with the other. Like, it don't it don't it, work like that. That doesn't, but it doesn't. Like, it's just, it's yeah, like, like, really. yeah, like, even before, yeah, like, even before Merz, though, like, I've heard people, like, make arguments that, like, when, you know what I'm saying, like, back when um I would have discussions with people, we would talk about, like, you know, how, how, you know, it's, be, it's becoming a bit much where it's like money and drugs is the, you know what I'm saying? It's like the forefront of what, you know, rap is supposed to be about. And right. someone will always come out of nowhere and, oh, well, you know, Rock him and Eric B on the front of their cover with, you know, uh, with money and all of that type of stuff. So how is it different? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just like, you know. Uh, how is it different? I'm sorry. How is it? Di- Yo. Yeah, but that's, that's what a lot of people, that's what a lot of people do. That's what a lot oh, of people Jesus. do. So and me that's... and Aaron were talking about this too, and Aaron the other day when we were talking about this this stupid out of context thing. Like we'll talk about how drugs has overrun hip hop now and how people glorify taking drugs. And I'll be like, Yeah, but you guys were on crack. Let me clarify something for you for you crackheads. <laughs> Cause you guys are on drugs. <laughs> like some of these millennials I hear some of y'all on some hard ass drugs right now uh-huh. we our culture and those of us who were that age if you were a teenager or a hip hop head you were not smoking crack okay we were not crackheads listening to hip hop music crack was whack we talked mm-hmm. shit about crackheads we hated crackheads we talked about some it? of the drugs but we did not smoke them. When did it become cool to be a crackhead? Look, remember in Angie Martinez's book when we read her book, My Voice? And uh-huh. she talked about how she slipped up with her girlfriends and smoked crack because she didn't really, because I didn't know what it was. It was too early on. It was like the early 80s. When she found out that that's what the fuck they were smoking, she never touched that shit again in life. Cause they were like, oh shit, that's crack. Oh hell, fucking no. They ain't gonna be no crackhead. Crack is whack. Crack is cheap. Oh my god, with me. <laughs> yeah, that's but that's how that's how you know what I'm saying that's how it was for a lot of things in hip hop at that time. Like, uh, and I feel like you know these these re- ridiculous arguments are made because certain stuff. Certain stuff seep through the cracks, you know what I'm saying, for whatever reason, yeah. and, and legitimize certain things. Like we talk about, like um, you know, um, like uh, uh, uh people like Wu Tang and Jay Z making like you know the whole, you know what I'm saying, like just the just the, drug, the drug culture of things, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> not actually not actually doing them, but you know that aspect of being a hustler. Man, and the immortal words of most death, hip hop went from selling crack to smoking it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's true. True. Unfortunately. What year was that? That was pretty pretty early on. Yeah. Um That was ninety nine. Yeah, it was like it was like the late night. Mm, I didn't notice everybody was on drugs until about five, six years ago. It was a slow build. It was. I was like, wait a minute, what? Because, like, I remember when I was still living in Philly, and it was just before I moved here to Chicago, like, 2013, when all of a sudden, like, I'm in love with the cocoa came out, and <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? I, I thought it was just me. I was highly afflicted by that song. You're in love with the what? 
You better be talking about Cocoa Puffs, my nigga. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. Are you talking about being in love with Cocoa? I was like, we don't make songs like that. No, stop. What? The next thing I know is a song about Molly. Like, who did that first song about Molly? Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. <laughs> I was like, are they making songs about, are they making happy fucking go lucky ditties and dedications to hard drugs now? What the fuck is happening? Yeah. Out here? Yeah. But see, that's, okay. see, but I think okay. the issue, I, like I said, I think the issue a lot of times is that we let certain things seep through the cracks. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like well, we always, we always talk about with the panders of, of the culture and stuff, the herb guys and all of them. Like, yeah. We let we let it see. It's like you know, all right. It, it became a point where it was okay to talk about selling the drugs. You know what I'm saying? And then that became like the forefront of things. It was like, are we always selling them? You know what I'm saying? And then after a while, you know, it's like, oh well, we talking about the drugs and the culture anyway. It's like you know, now look where we at. We just you know we doing them. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like, well, I unfortunately it, know someone who took that pathway to crack them. Like she dated a crack dealer first and mm-hmm. since it's okay to be a sack chaser and a, and a person who dates crack dealers then I'm sure she dated him and he was probably taking the crack at some point because he was doing a fucking you know he was you know working with Nino Brown he he did a G money mm-hmm. and and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm of course he was like oh you can smoke this crack too and you know she went from being a, a sack chaser to a super straight up crackhead and she's been a crackhead for years as far as i know mm. yeah that's crazy i mean and that's but, that's yeah. cra- it's crazy that you say that because like that's like the perfect analogy for what we're dealing with with hip-hop it's like you know we played the dangerous game by sitting up there and allowing like these you know what i'm saying quote-unquote hustlers into the culture you know what I'm saying? Because they, you know, they could rhyme or whatever, like Jay Z say, you know, I ain't a rapper, I'm a hustler. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, because we allowed that, it's like, you know, we played that dangerous game and now look what we're dealing with. We got, you know, hip hop is actually on drugs, is most definitely. Oh, yeah. Compare- Once, like 100. Compare hip hop to what, Ant? To the crack game. Well, yeah. uh, that was that was Jay Z's doing. We already said like that was their doing, like the the nineties era. It's their, it's our fault for turning this because the the next thing, the jump that Aaron didn't didn't necessarily you know make was we went from from selling you know for it from selling crack and it, it being okay to sell a drug and talk about selling a drug to saying that not just that but not only am i selling drugs this shit i'm doing right now is just like selling drugs i'm going to push this shit like i push weight i'm going to yep. turn this into my new hustle so so somebody like mirrors who is a little bit younger than me but he's still too, too old like as aaron said he's too old to be acting a freaking fool but yeah. comparing things that don't make sense to compare like literally you comparing um Daz effects <laughs> to Migos that yeah, shit is so it is so ridiculous it's so it is intellectually irresponsible he said that they Daz effects were were using old commercials in their rhymes for they want effects and, and like well and they repeated this you know these things over and over again and they had nonsensical lyrics but they were doing it to be clever please tell me how saying Versace 86 times in a very remedially repetitive form is fucking clever it's groundbreaking <laughs> Do you know what there is actually in poetry, there is a term for saying over and over and over again, but it's done in an ironic fashion. It's done for emphasis. It's done in a much more highbrow way. There ain't shit highbrow about Migos repeating for the word Versace. Over and over and over and over. 
And yes, it looks like you were left out of bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> that take off? I don't know. It's funny. It's funny that um, like Versace was like the comparison too, because um. Like uh, when when Bad and Bougie came out, like a lot of people was like, like really is this what you know what I'm saying? Is this what it's come to? Like this shit is trash. Like you know people that like you know know better were like, man, no, like this, this Bad and Bougie shit is trash. And it's like it's like well, you know what I'm saying? Versace was worse if you ask me. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was that much worse. And it, it seemed like a lot of people like I don't know if they missed it or whatever the case may be, or maybe it wasn't as popular. Mm-hmm. Ain't trash. I, you know what? I just I don't even know. Like I, I can't like I can't even. But I mean, as a rhetorical device, they were not using repetition as a rhetorical device. They weren't using repetition as a poetic device. It was a they, were device. Using, they were using that shit right exactly. They're trying to float this bullshit over. They floating this bullshit over. So this is gonna say Versace a zillion times on the record. Right. The other Versace, thing is, the other Versace thing made is, a lot of money off of it. Look, the other thing is when he said that Daz Effects said like a bunch of um commercials. He said, Well, how how can you get more commercial than a, you know using a bunch of old commercials inside your song? Using a bunch of old commercials inside your song and actually being a fucking sellout to make money, what do those things have to do with each other at all? They ain't got nothing to do with each other. So why would you fucking make that point and bring that makes no fucking sense whatsoever? Just like Cooley D ain't got nothing to do with future either. Walking no. clickbait. Cause he said that too. He said he said Schooly D um, was moving the crowd. Well, Future moves the crowd the same way Schooly D was moving the crowd back in the day, and it's not look, the same thing at all. Look, Schooly D is not as lofty an MC as Rakim. I'll give you that. Nah, he's really not. Hmm. But but Schooly D is much closer to the origins of the culture. Am I going to say that Future is close to the origins of the culture? If you don't get the fuck out of here, no. How about this? He can't even he, rhyme without auto tune. Not even sing rhyme. He can't even rhyme without auto tune. Wait, that's a, you, you know what? You know what's funny about when he was like showing those, giving those two examples. I uh, thought about too because I watched that again and um, I realized that a lot of these artists nowadays like they repeat the same shit over and over and over again to the effect yeah. that when when they when they perform a show. They don't even have to say a lot because the crowd, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, they just Yep. How can you how can you not know the words to a song that remedial? That has the same fucking remedial lyrics over and over again. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. And if he and if Mears wants to say, well, that's the origin. Y- you know what? We started out there, we moved past that. We moved on. We moved away from that. And Again, if you want to like point out like, oh well, we have somebody like Missy who threw who's like a throwback. Yeah, she's one throwback. We don't throw back the but whole see, fucking culture. But see, even even people like Missy, even people like we can go as far back as Rappers Delight. Rappers Delight as a song is not even remedial. Like where you know what I'm saying, like where you can just give the song to the crowd and you ain't even got to perform the shit. Look, only because everybody fucking memorized it. <laughs> exactly and it took time it takes time to remember a song that's like 10 12 13 minutes long so like everybody knows Lottie Dottie too but it's not it's not on that remedial level that like Versace is or like you know fucking you know Percocet Molly Percocet now, right it's not right how, say it's remedial to us but it's groundbreaking to somebody else but, but doesn't that make you look very, very frightened? <laughs> How impressive is it as an artist? Like you know, if you if you an artist, I can you know what I'm saying. If you artist, you go on stage, and the whole crowd they know they know your whole song because the whole song is Molly Percocet. 
Yeah. I've never chase a never chase a bitch. And that's the reason that they know your whole song. That's not yeah. as impressive as going on the stage and the whole and the whole crowd know your verses from New York State of Mind. That's not the same. It's not oh, it's not, not as all. impressive at all. Not at all. It's not, but it's a sign of the time. Not time. even a little bit. Not even a little sign bit. Sign of the time. Sign of the time. These kids, kids these days don't even know who Smokey the Bear is, yo. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Ask me a millennial who Smokey the Bear is. They're like, who? They probably think it's like a new strain of, um, a new strain of ganja. Only you can prevent for it. That's why California always on fire. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, stop <laughs> California, we're sorry You're on fire And Millennials, <laughs> can they sing around butts <laughs> Yo I straight I straight up and down I just thought about that though You know what though I remember, cause I was gonna say Before we came came out to lunch So let's come back Cause I'm, I can't with mirrors anymore I'm, I'm a like throw something at home. Um, I remember watching a documentary once, and I can't remember which one it was, where they were talking to MC Shan, and I think MC Shan was recording or something. And at the and and Rakim came in, and this is this is when he was brand spanking new, and and. He grabbed the mic and he got on and he was sitting. I ain't no joke and he was recording it. And he said everybody in the booth, like outside, was cracking up, laughing. They were like, "Is he serious?" Really? Like he just grabbing the mic. Get, yeah, cause it, nobody had that kind of style. They was like, "Who is this serious as cancer?" Ha ha ha! I see what I did there. Who is this serious as cancer MC on the mic just? You know, this is all straight face. I'm no comedian. You know, just... just, (laughs) Little did they know. Yo, and they said, like, right after that, when he blew... They were like, damn. That shit is fucking insane. That shit is fucking insane. They didn't I wonder, like, from what, like from what that. perspective, from what perspective were they listening to that though? Like, were they in the? They was in the recording session. They were outside the booth. He said, just listening to it because nobody had heard anybody get on the mic and just get like be that, you know, have that kind of tone on the mic. Because remember, they were they were animated all the time. Mm. You know, they were trying to entertain. So. It, Everybody's like, what is this this monotone? He's on the mic with this monotone. You know? He doesn't sound, you know, but he fucking moved the crowd. Cause he rocked him my life. And so with that, now the question becomes, because Mears is talking about how real hip hop in in that post he was talking about real versus fake hip hop how real hip hop and fake hip hop there's no differentiation no, there's no difference between the two of those things you know there is no fake hip hop if, if, if somebody grabs the mic and does x y and z it's real hip hop no no And here's my thing about that. Here's my thing about that, Aaron and Ant. What's that? Do we have a difference between a rapper and an MC? There's a huge difference between rappers and MCs. Then if we have a difference between a rapper and an MC, which we'll talk about in a second, then there's a difference between real hip-hop and fake hip-hop. You can't have a it? real rapper and a real MC. You know, a difference between a rapper and MC if there's no difference between real and fake hip hop. There one hundred percent is. Is it possible for a rapper to be real hip hop? I, I would call Miss Elliott a rapper. I would call Miss Elliott a rapper. She's one of the exceptions. Yeah. 
Interesting. Interesting. How? I don't understand. I don't understand where we're going with this. <laughs> I don't understand where we're going with this. I'm lost. All right, name another rap. Name another rapper that's that's real hip hop. Another rapper that's real uh, hip hop. What's the name? Too short. Yes. Yeah. Trick Daddy. Easy. Trina. Easy. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. There's a couple. I feel of like I feel like rappers are on that on that cuspy line between commerce and. And and um and art. Yeah, I can see that. I would call like, Curtis like, a rapper. Just, you you watch it really? I might. I don't know. Curtis, Curtis. I fuck with Curtis. I don't know, but I I think I might allow him to be an MC on a good day. On a good day. On a good day. A- Aaron, are you still confused? Yeah, the only reason I'm confused because the way I always looked at it is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if 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 somebody could bring that energy to a show, and this is why, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always I always looked at LL Cool J as like, you know, one of those top tier as far as that go because like, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of how you feel about him, you go to an LL show, you're going to be entertained. You go to oh, a Red Man great. show, you go There's to no a Red that. Man show, you're going to be entertained. No you know what I'm saying? And they can. Okay. And they can hold that. They can hold that crowd a lot of times by themselves. But they're I not rappers. Like, I look you at it like rappers right there. The difference is like I kind of, I kind of feel the same way with Missy too, though. I feel but like the I difference is like a and Nelly versus a, 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 a currency type rapper. Oh, Nelly! Yeah. That's why I would want to sometimes give currency just a moniker of MC because Nelly is a rapper. Currency, I would say. Like I would let him not, have the title of MC. Really like I don't think he's straddling the line between commerce and art. I, and Nelly and mystical. Nelly and mystical. Yeah, there you go. Nelly and mystical. No, mystical's MC. Mystical see, that's is. what. See, <laughs> but all right. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. Okay. So okay, Aaron. Here is my definition. Okay, and I'm going to say this. So it doesn't have to be said. Okay? Again. Okay? Um, this is how it should be done. This style is identical <laughs> to mine. Okay? All right? If you're not going to be a mic controller, drop the mic. You shouldn't be holding it. That is my definition of an MC. If you are an MC, you grab that mic and you command through your lyricism. If you command through your stage presence. If you command through your persona, I will let you have MC. But I feel like Missy got. I feel like Missy one of those people that got that got that though. But if you are truer, you have to be truer to your art form than a rapper. Then, then to the money that's going to come into your pocket for you to lean more to the MC side than the rapper side. Mm. What makes what, what makes Missy a rapper? To clear it up for Aaron. I don't think Missy has the lyrical prowess to be an MC. It's not enough focus on on her lyrics to for her to be an actual MC. You need to be lyrical to be an MC. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I'm not ever gonna call you an MC. And the fucking definition that Rakim laid down. If when you grab the mic, you say blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Going number one on the billboard. Oh, today it will. It will 100 will today. Number what? Okay, because see now you can control the crowd saying next to fucking nothing. Mhm. But you could not do that back in it. Like Aaron just said, if I put the mic out there and because my lyrics are so fucking simplistic, I don't even have to say them. You'll say them for me. I'm not controlling you. You're controlling it. The MC control. He's the mic controller. She's the mic controller. She controls the shit. Yeah, true. 
So that would mean there are certain people who I'm never going to give the moniker of MC to. Ja Rule. So oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. No. Wait, did you listen to really, really, really? Hey, yeah. Uh, are you on that? Are you that still out. on that set? Really? <laughs> Man, don't make me boo you on the show today. Try it. Try it. No, come on, man. Like, we know who the real MCs are. We know who the real MCs are. They're the same ones we always talk about all the time. They're the same ones that we, that you know. If we know in our heart, if we sit and really think about it, we know who's a true MC and who's actually a rapper. We got mm. Shibuya, Shibuya Roko. I, I love a ton of rappers. I do. You name some of them. Is Redman an MC or a rapper? He's an MC. One hundred percent. I just said Rayman was an MC. Yeah, I said that too. I was co-signing you. He's definitely an MC. Everybody in Wu Tang is an MC. What about Capadonna? Even, even the, I was gonna say I was gonna say even the even the third tier ones are still MCs. Don't start with that Capadonna shit again. <laughs> Let that be a let that be let that be a lesson to the to the new artist. Uh, Wu Tang got a Wu Tang got a bitch that's better than y'all. Uh, Whoa! Uh, no. It was like everybody on the bench over at over at Wu Tang is better than your best rapper. <laughs> hey yo! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I want to try and catch somebody. Yo, again, Shaheen is still an MC. I'm not even gonna take that shit from him. Uh, I don't know. Did he really write? He ain't write a lot of that stuff on the first album. He's a pretty good, well, actor. Good, actor. pretty good actor too. He actually was a good actor. He's a very yeah, good actor. Fries that's, up a, or, uh, that's a good question, Aaron. Aaron, here's the question: Do you have to write all your own rhymes to be a good MC? You gotta write a good portion of them. You gotta write quite yeah. a bit of them. If you're gonna be in the in the conversation for top tier MC, then yes, you have to write your own rhymes. Well, not even just top tier, but just you a know, good MC. Say for the sake of good MC. You gotta write MC. a good portion. Of them. Okay. Because I mean, there's a bunch of people who we know that have had some help here and there that are still considered in the the MC category. Be an MC or a rapper. <laughs> like, okay, rappers we love. Easy, Easy wrote well, none of his own rhymes, but we love him. He's a rapper. I was like, they acknowledge that. <laughs> what? What? I said, is Mickey a good MC? Is Mickey an MC or a rapper? I'm not. I'm sorry. We on the air right now. <laughs> Don't 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 go there, please. Don't make me do this. Why not? Why not? <laughs> hold up, hold up. Why not? Why not? I'm me do this. When we say that, when we say that, uh, rappers rappers do better on wax than they do on stage, basically. Generally, yeah. Apparently, the show where the money at. They are. You don't make money from records. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of um. A lot of the people that we like, you know, uh, that we categorize as rappers, they, um, they a lot of times don't. Huh? We're just going to discard the Nikki question, huh? I'm, I'm oh, no, not, we off that. I'm off that. No, no. <laughs> Why not? No. Wait. Fans want to know. No, fans don't want to know nothing about that. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of people that we categorize as um, rappers, they live off the <laughs> fact like 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 we just got done talking about like they live off of the fact that people know their songs and they can recite them word for word. Yep. Yeah. As an like, MC, I think that's dope. I would definitely say though, and I'm going to, of course, all day every day do this because everybody knows how much I love him. 
when I was at the Lauren Hill and Nas concert, two people who will obviously be in the upper echelon of MCs. Nas is one of the only MCs that I've ever seen with the complicated ass fucking rhymes that he has concocted throughout his career that people will be in the crowd reciting his shit word for fucking word with him including my you said what but I heard his show was kind of boring it was not boring I heard those, not, who, not. those who said his show was boring, I want to know what show they were at. It, you know what it is? It wasn't lit enough. It wasn't and lit enough. And that's what I'm saying. Like, they're used to... The crowd surfing and shit like that. Yeah, exactly. This, I know, that is not a fucking rap show. They have right. gone into fucking a whole other arena with this shit now. That is not what that shit is or what we do. Shout out to you. Yeah, and and that's kind of thing that's going on. It depends because like Tentacion type of shit. It depends because you know uh, what you gonna call it. Uh, Red Man, Red Man, and Method Man is known for having shows like that. Yeah, they do, and they're like a lot of fun, and their shows yeah. a lot of fun. Apparently, Meth is fighting with the uh, palm surfing person. Somebody's claiming credit for his palm surfing. Really? Yeah, he was talking about that on the Breakfast Club. Wait a minute. I don't think I saw that particular interview. Yeah, I didn't hear that either. Black Thought was... Yo, hello, Black Thought. Throw that shit up on Sway, yo. Well, you know, Black Thought's definitely an MC. God, MC. Um, Black Thought is not... Yo, you know what I was thinking about? I was listening to The Roots. I've been listening to The Roots a lot lately, too. Um, mm-hmm. They like the they like the spurs of the rap. Or the rap, uh, okay, <laughs> alrighty. They are because, like, you know, people really don't people people really don't get a roots the credit they deserve. Like, as far as like longevity, as far as like you know, actually having like consistent consistent I, songs I, and all of that. Shout out to you, San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Who else the roots besides like Outkast and Wu Tang? As far as groups. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, it, yeah, it's crazy. Thing. Uh, I'm thinking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's that um question again? What's, what's the question? Who's touching the roots as far as groups and like consistency? Consistency and delivery is like besides Wu Tang and Outkast. You mean like back in the day? Definitely Run DMC. I was giving mean, to them. Like the roots are still putting out critically acclaimed albums. All but you gotta, is- yeah, but you gotta think when they started. It started in the 90s. I'm saying they're still going now, but... Looks like another one's covered in real. I love organics. You can say what you want about it. Oh, you know how I feel about organics. I love you. I love you, Roots. Organics was a jumbled mess. I can't listen to it. It's a jumbled mess. I feel like Quest Love would agree with you. I listen to organics. I feel like he would, too. I feel like Quest Love... Quest Love, Quest Love, he one of them perfectionist types. He like, eh, that old shit, I don't know. That shit ain't what he thought it was when back I, then. Do you think he would do that? Yeah. When, I, when I have officially run out of fucks to give about anything, I listen to organic. <laughs> it really? Yeah, like, wow. that's, that's my ears. Okay, question, y'all. Question, question. Here's a good one. Little Wayne. MC uh, or rapper. You know, yeah, he, definitely, he definitely a rapper. You know what I think should be considered. You know what I think should be considered in the uh, criteria too, though. What? what? Everything we talked about off air, like all the elements that that um that Stop. up. Stop. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait! Let Aaron finish his thought, though. Nah, I was saying, I was... Wait, what? Wayne, Wayne, Wayne gave you. He gave us enough personal tracks. To be qualified as an MC, like we may not like. He, it's not the track though. We may not like his overall presentation, but Wayne as an MC is a plausible argument. I feel 
feel like some people would think it's a plausible argument. It really is, it is though. I feel like he could have been an MC and he decided I, to be a rapper. I mean, that he got enough material to pick from. You got the mixtapes, albums. But it's not even the material though. It's it's what he decided to do with with what he has. I think he made a conscious decision to be. Everything that Wayne spit from the evidence that we have available, Wayne is living. So. But we just got done talking about how, you know, uh, walking that fine line of the artistry yep. and the commerce. Uh, There's no that. fine line. There's no he's fine living, line there, though. He's living his bars. That makes him an artist. I don't know. And and, and, and he can be, um, again, he can he can be very lyrical. There is a bunch of questions about him writing his own lyrics in some places, though, like the whole mm-hmm. kid argument. But like I said, like I said, you can still have a ghostwriter and still be an MC. No, we already said you oh, cannot have it doesn't a work large. Like that. Go- no, it doesn't work like that. You can't have a like a, a lot of ghostwriting and still be an MC. No. Nah. If that's the case, then no. Nah. If that's the case, then no. Nah. But if we're going, if we're going to count ghost ghostwriting like ghost bars, then yeah, sure. But if that's the case, if it goes right in, then uh, it don't count. Like, that's part of the reason why we're not going to put, like, somebody like Drake in this equation. Like, and and, and, okay. and when you said Nikki, we fucking ignored you. Because we were like, mm-hmm. <laughs> We didn't right, count what? Gilly. But Gilly. we just got, but we just got done talking about how, you know, you, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, catering more so to the commerce side of things, like this, this card, yep. like, you know, your whole... You know what I'm saying? Lil the... He did what? That is Lil Wayne for the culture. No, only he, 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 he no, for... only for his pockets. <laughs> for his pockets. Is he a, a true hip hop rapper? Again, I think he really wants to be, but I think he made a decision. He made a decision. He is made he an executive bad? decision. Is he as bad as Nelly? I say, let's make everybody mad now. Nah, How do you feel about Jay Z as far as hip hop rapper? Just just thinking that as soon as you said it. I mean, I mean, as soon as I was, as soon as I was talking about art versus commerce and fucking Wayne, I was like, Jay Z's name is getting ready to come up. He is the biggest. He's the biggest perpetrator of it. But I was. But Jay Z is an MC. I would count Jay as an MC. And Not by the I, definition y'all just gave, I wouldn't. But the but the reason why I'm gonna count Jay Z as an MC is because he's very high caliber. He's too high caliber. Does not he have the writers. Even though he doesn't um, always. He he is he is on that line. One hundred percent, he's on that line. This, this see, is, but you, see, but we already we already talked about it already, and he he more he more about his pocket than anything. See, he I does, think I think he wants you to think that, but I think I think. Yeah, he, can I get? What? Can I get a what? Can I get a what? Oh, can I get open? Well. Well, that was back in the day when when he was, because he was, remember, we talked about Jay-Z. He's always done what was popular at the time. And he did Can I Get Open because that's how people were rhyming at that point. But Jay-Z is always going to be concerned with whether or not the rhymes that he's crafted are actually high caliber or not. He's not going to do spit garbage, ever. The thing is, he has that high caliber capability, but it's a conscious decision to dumb it down. But he, but he's so high caliber that even when he dumbs it down... It don't it, seem like it's dumbed down. It doesn't seem... <laughs> Yeah, true. I mean, yeah, I could, I could, I could agree with that because, like, it's plenty of times, like, I'll have, like, you know, you'll end up in a debate with somebody, especially a Jay Z stand, that you know what I'm saying, like, you gonna sit there, you gonna go back and forth over, you know what I'm saying, like the the, the rhymes he spit or whatever, you know what I'm saying, whatever the case may be. Whereas though, like, 
it's other people like Easy E. I don't see anybody having a debate on. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, how hell be, no. how dope Easy E bars was. You know what I'm saying? Well, hey, it's, the... it's how dope that DOC's bars are. And but, how at the, the bars are. but at the same time, like you know, like they, they, like we talked about before, they created a character where it's though, like they it's did. not, it's the focus isn't on you know what I'm saying, like you know his his word, his outstanding word play or you know his uh whatever his the case may be. Right. Yeah, it was more, it was more so just like for like the aesthetic effect or whatever. That shit was for shits and giggles, like 100. Same way with Too Short. Same way with with um trick daddy you know like they have that comedic effect that everybody yeah i feel like a lot of times people can't tell the difference with daddy so how how so how do we look at red man then if we're going to talk about you know what i'm saying rounds being used for a comedic effect then you know what i'm saying yeah. being but it's being but, like but over he, the top he still got bars though it's not he's still, he's still he's lyrical absolutely. i don't care if it's funny it's yeah. lyrical absolutely enough see no question that the, the reason I, I mean, I know that, but the reason I brought that up is because I've gotten into big, like, Red Man is definitely in my top five automatically, uh, like, you know, all the time, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of people mm-hmm. will sit there and look at you crazy because, you know, it's like, like we said, is that, it's that hustler culture, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't, if it ain't somebody that you can, like, uh, automatically connect to, you know, the hustler side, the hustler aspect of rap, yeah. you know what I'm saying, the, the gangster aspect of rap, then it's like, oh, well, how could you even talk about them? Except for, uh, I guess, Rakim. Like, nobody ever argues whether Ra- Rakim should be in that uh, category, you know what I'm saying? Because they fucking he, know better. Yeah, but it's oh, but it's always you know what I'm saying. Oh well, Red Man, like how can you like have Red Man? I'm like, cause he dope as fuck. Like you know what I'm saying. Red Man get Look, busy when he get I when he get behind Keith the mic. Murray. It's never no, it's never no whack shit. No, I look at Keith Murray is the same way. Like everybody's like, you think Keith Keith, Keith Murray's an MC? Keith Murray definitely is an MC. Yeah, I wouldn't. He wouldn't be one of my. He's not one of my favorites, but he's, you know, I can I can definitely favorite. see how you see that. He's not one of my favorites, but he's definitely an MC. He's still an MC. Yeah. What was up with that? What was up with that battle between him and Fredro Star? That shit was trash. I in the world. That was weird. Was they both high or something? That battle was you weird. Know what I was but asking myself that. The most beautiful thing in the world is a class. <laughs> Like, people will look at me crazy if I said Eric and EPMD definitely deserve to be in that conversation. See, I mean, they're not the dopest MCs ever. But are they MCs? MCs. You damn right they are. More people, more people prior to that, that swing changeover and that that particular change in the guard that we had from the golden era to the commercial era in hip hop, the nineties, more of those people can be categorized as MCs because there wasn't a lot of money to make from it yet. So during those time periods, it was about battling a lot. It was about getting your respect in the street as well as, you know, on stage from like moving up, you know, rocking the crowd and moving the crowd. It was about your lyrical prowess and your lyrical ability. Wait, like, I mean, look so, at, like, um, Chubb Rock. Chubb Rock is funny as hell. Chubb Rock is lyrical as he is an MC. He really is. He really is. Chubb Rock is busy. Is MC Hammer and D an MC? Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> Remember when, when um, Mears was talking about, they, we kicked his ass so hard, he snatched the MC off his name? <laughs> <laughs> you can't just be sticking MC on your name like that's gonna mean something. If you not, when did it become? MC, when did when did it become? When did it become not cool to put MC next to your name too? I, I always wondered that. When everybody after became that, little, after that cultural shift in in the nineties, because mm-hmm. it was like fuck MC, let's make this money. Yeah. So how do y'all so, so how do y'all feel about um how do y'all feel about like MCs now like as far as like you know like uh these people that um and we I mean we know who they are we hear them all the time all, every time you hear any raps you know what I'm saying that you know these new rappers is trash and all that you know what I'm saying uh 
like how do we feel about you know like what they're doing you know what i'm saying as far as like you know uh that's a the big pile of rap. A big that. pile of rap. That's recess. Save for recess. That's a big pile of rap right there. Yep. Yeah. Save for recess. <laughs> so speaking of recess, who do we have for recess? Who are we gonna do recess on today? Do we come to a consensus on that? Who we pick from? I want to say we said Lupe. Lupe. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that too. I think Mr. The criteria, the criteria should be MCs who acknowledge the fifth element, who promote the fifth element. Well, he definitely falls into that. Uh, he does. Yeah, he does. He's retired now. Did he actually What's retire, though? You, don't, you never retire from rap. Rappers who are supposed to be rappers are like professional wrestlers. But I feel like he said he was gonna retire and he really didn't. He said Everybody he said they gonna retire and never do. It ain't, it ain't How many about times nothing. Has Jay retired from hip hop. Yeah. But um, okay. So wasn't there a whole thing like the drill rappers like ran him out and he said he was not coming back, but then he did come back. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah I heard about that. <laughs> With him. <laughs> Well, because he started talking about how dangerous drill was, but he wasn't lying. He's just that it's the truth. That shit is crazy. Yeah. It's da- it's dangerous in more ways than one, too. Yeah. Cause like you got like, you know what I'm saying, like the whole culture behind it and then you know, you got people that like you know what I'm saying, like uh like what Malice was talking about, like you know, people that's listening to this music, this is the energy that's being pushed out there, you know what I'm saying? So it's not it's never good. Yeah. That's true. It's really not. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I really hope that, that, that Lupe hasn't left because the, the culture needs somebody nah, like Lupe. Said he was done. Lupe, no. I don't know. He sounded like he that last album. I don't know what the hell he was doing. That shit was all over the place. <laughs> no, Mr. Fiasco. You can't leave. Yeah. Jay Z shit. I'm retiring, but I'm coming out with an album. Um, yeah. not only am I gonna retire, I'm gonna retire. I'm gonna come out with an album like every other year, and I'm gonna make 444. But nope, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> so you think he made 444 so that he could be called the MC? I think. Who Jay Z? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't know. I mean. He's I don't like, like. I think we got one more Jay Z album coming. Well, I think you said this I mean, last got, time before forty forty four came. He got fucking no ID. Like you know, he like spit some some real like mind boggling shit. Like he wants to be in the MC conversation now. I feel like. Oh. I feel like Jay. I feel like Jay is always in the MC for better or worse though. They true, be. but he wants to really be in it. He wants to solidify his legacy. I think so too, but see, somebody like Lupe, he's been consistently doing that shit, elevating and staying with the 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 spirit of what hip hop is and what it's supposed to do yeah, at all I'm... times. So, yeah, Lupe, Lupe, Lupe been getting busy for a long time, so. So it's not right here, weirdo. So you got a problem? I do have a problem because he always Everybody promises albums. Everybody on this show is a weirdo. Come on. He always promises albums he can't deliver on. Oh lord. I think he just he procrastinates. I think he wants shit to be really good. Like he he's a perfectionist. I think. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Albums that ain't that, like, or you get out there and tell us an album coming. Make sure the album is done. But I mean, they always call Nas lazy too. But Nas is like, but people have seen. They said they've seen Nas get in a booth and do Nas like is. one song, like six and seven. Nas and seven. Shit's like gotta be right though. It's gotta He's be right. 
Yeah, that's I always think. that's always dope to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Rappers that have like more than one verse for a song. I think I'm best I think he, he in his feelings right now. Who, Lupe? Ah, is anything he pulls right now is suspect. I, look, I'm not having this conversation. Anything he pulls. Now I was posting a selfie in the bed in a Dita track I'm not having this conversation. That's a tripper right now. Anything he says is suspect. <laughs> not having yes. this conversation. I don't really, you know what I'm saying, like... It, I ain't, I ain't really, I ain't really too concerned with like, you know, what I'm saying, with these dudes doing their personal life. As long as the product sound good, like, you know, I was kind of, I was like, you know, um, like skeptical when, um, when Hip Hop Is Dead had came out. When Hip Hop Is Dead came out, I was like, uh, I don't know how this is gonna be. I ain't know how I was gonna feel about it. And then when it came out, I was like, I like this. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, uh-huh. Right, 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 right. I don't have him that many Nas albums that I would. There's one, the one that whose name will never be spoken, Nostradamus. And, and I mean, we've talked about this before. That it's, it's not a bad album; it's just a bad Nas album, which is very different. Saying a lot. It is. Yeah, but see, my issue when I when Hip Hop Is Dead came out was like um, Street Disciple had uh, came out before that, and Street Disciple is like. It was one of those things where it was like, you know, the next album could have went anywhere. You know what I'm saying? True. And then when he yeah. started talking all that hip hop is dead stuff, it was like, all right, you know, let but me just hear him out. But you know what, Aaron? I understand because everybody was talking so much shit, including Lil Wayne at the time, who got all riled up about it, a rapper. <laughs> right. But Lil Wayne embodied what Nas was talking about. What Nas was talking about on that album was what we always talk about: the death of art. And He's a hip hop. The death of art and the reign of commerce. That's what yeah. he's talking about. You can't have yeah. high art. That's existing at the same time that everybody's worshiping money. It doesn't work. Right. That's another reason. That's another reason why I always go back. Like I think a lot of times we always go back to um albums like Illmatic because a lot of people would say, you know what I'm saying, especially like younger cats, like younger dudes would be like, I see them all the time. They be trolling on like these hip hop pages that on Facebook and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. they'll be like, well, um. All y'all, all y'all hip hop heads, y'all always talk about Illmatic, but it was other great um, albums out around that time, like Southern Playalistic, um, yeah. you know, Ready to Die was out, um, yeah. you know, all the, all these other albums that came out in '94, and you know, all y'all can never talk about is Illmatic, but it's like it's like critical, it's critical things that was brought up, it's critical like you know, uh, 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 uh situ- Topics and stuff that was brought up on Illmatic, you know what I'm saying, that you could dig into. Like, when you, when we talking about right now, like, you know, the art versus the commerce side of it, like, you mm-hmm. got Nas on Illmatic saying, you know what I'm saying, we've been doing this even be, even without a record deal, you know what I'm saying, Nas saying shit like that yep. on Illmatic, you know what I'm saying, that stuff that, and like we said, like, you know, like, bringing, bringing stuff like, uh, the, the, the interpolations and the samples from, um, from, uh, uh, Wild, wild, wild style, and you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Like, just it's mm-hmm. just that stuff that make it more that make it more important for the culture. You know what I'm saying? Than yeah. than other the other things yeah. that was going on well, around. We aren't it. saying that like we aren't saying that those albums aren't amazing and they're not great. They are great. They exactly. were amazing. But right. that album is it like important in the culture and it holds more weight for other reasons than just it being superior work. Right, exactly. And I and a lot it, of people don't understand that. It was married to commerce in a way that a lot of people at that time weren't necessarily able to do and at a time when New York you know, when the when the MC and stuff had been sliding away from New York and was heading in a direction and was in the direction of Los Angeles because of the chronic and everything that had you know, like it was almost yeah, like they don't, yeah, they don't under, yeah, they don't understand all of that stuff that was going on around that time that yeah, made no you know context. what I'm saying, what was going no on. Context. Yeah, they don't yeah, yeah, that yeah, that kind of stuff. See so but, next and that's why 
No, and that's why I get upset with the whole like drug culture of it because like you got a lot of people and I've had these conversations with people. They'll sit there and say, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh, Jay Z talk more about the street. Like we all talk about how dope. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay Z talk about like the the darkest parts of like you know being a hustler and the street life and all of that type of stuff. Uh-huh. But a lot of fans, especially nowadays, they automatically associate hip hop with that that street life. Like if it's not about if it's not about you know what I'm saying like you know. Uh, I, I was I was actually a thug and I was in the street. If I was actually a hustler and I was in the street. If it's not about that and you know what I'm saying, you can't you can't paint the picture vivid for your listener and all that type of stuff. Then they, well, no, because phone clothes is boring. It's boring. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's I don't know. That's that's not fair at all. You know what I'm saying for for the artists that you know came before that really wasn't on that type of time because like i said or the artists now like that that just don't fall into that category why do they have to yeah. fall into that category like kendrick doesn't cole doesn't there's a ton of folks that that don't like they were play, praising macklemore when he first came out same thing like oh well he's not talking about that but why do you have to be black and talk about that everybody who's black that wants to be an mc is not a thug and here you go, you know, brought me back to the great white hype himself, Eminem. Uh-oh. <laughs> because that's another, that's an, that's always my issue with, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, like, like, black fans that will listen to Eminem and say that type of stuff. Like, they'll say, oh, well, you know, that's why Eminem is dope because, you know what I'm saying? Like, he never had to, you know, rap about, you know, being a hustler. He never had to rap about being in the street. He was just doing him. But then you'll get mad at a black artist because they're not doing that. Because, you know what I'm saying? Yep. That's, the same people. That's crazy. People that that's it is crazy, crazy to me. It's completely insane. So, let me just, let me, let me get homework in real fast. Because we we're, we're, we're dialing down here. Um, it was a good show today. Um, please continue watching Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix. And you can read the knowledge book if you so choose. The children's book, once again, by that that lovely, lovely artist who wrote all the rest of the children's books, Lamar Clark. You can read the book on knowledge. It is the last book. Is there and, applause? Oh, of course there's applause for that. And remember, it's a children's book. <laughs> But if you don't know shit about it, it's a good place to start for you. It really okay? is. Um, and so next week is the Knowledge Show, our last show on the Five Elements of Hip Hop. And it's going to be a lot of just us throwing out little known facts and knowledge and things from each other. Because knowledge is about knowing the culture. And we talk so much on this show about why it's so important to know the culture. So we're going to talk about that next week cuz it it just is. Like you you can't know where the fuck you're going if you have no clue where you've been. Right. That sounds so cliché, but it's very true. Like you're going to wind in circle. Yeah. And it's a shame because like hip hop not even that old. It's only like 40 something years old like it is forty years old, <laughs> and now we and now we in the and now we in a place now where people just don't know nothing about it. Like that's crazy. It's too close. <laughs> it's too close in the time frame. Like it's not forty years. I that's mean, not apparently old. we're all going back to the days of you know the origins now and Schooly D, and because we haven't evolved past all that shit yet. That's not the case. Like you're not gonna invent the shit that we already like. We already fucking done this. What are you doing? You gonna redo it now? You gonna redo this shit? Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a bit much. And let me tell you, if you are redoing it, the shit was done better the first fucking time. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Go figure. So I don't know. You know, it is what it is. But no, we had a really good show this evening. Um. We got we got some aggression out because we have a lot of issues with, with the MC topic. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Source but spot. what? I said it's a sore spot. 
It is a sore spot. And did not wear his funeral black today as he was threatening to do on the last show, though. Because hip-hop is... It's hip-hop day, like Nas said. Hmm. I don't know. With that, school is officially out. 